I'm Dr. Richard Miller, and I wanted to give you a little bit of highlights of what the center has to offer and to discuss a little bit about what kinds of things you might be able to do here. Simulation training has been a passion of mine for more than 20 years. We opened in 2011 after a long journey in order to come to this point. And originally we began to look at in situ or simulation on site at different hospital venues. Unfortunately, they often didn't work and we began to look at establishing an off-site simulation center, which seems to have helped substantially in terms of the overall training. In 2011, when we began and opened the simulation center here on this very site. We've now expanded to 2,200 square feet, up from our initial 800 square feet. We continue to expand our services in order to meet the needs of the learners in our community and we hope to continue to serve all of those people that have looked to the simulation center to uh, have their education and training. And we've now uh, been able to encompass uh, multiple different uh, specialties in terms of the overall training here at the center. Of the numerous different uh, resources we have here at the simulation center, they are all intended to provide the opportunity to simulate training for all areas in healthcare. One of the areas that we're very excited about is our area where we are able to train patient interactions with our CPARs, our certified patient representatives. We've been able to train them in terms of not just the tenets of aided, acknowledge, introduce, duration, uh, explanation, and thanking them but we've also been able to give them task-specific training in terms of the patient's financial obligations and other things that are important in the CPAR's job. This is going to be something that we're very excited about as we move forward because it again expands beyond just the medical into all functions of the hospital and uh, outpatient administration. We're also very excited to have an outpatient and inpatient room where we have not only a standardized patient but also one of our Noel mannequins which allow us to provide an opportunity for all of our learners to uh, have an opportunity to develop skills with regard to breaking bad news. A very critical and important part of that compassionate care that we so much value at the RWJ Barnabas Health. In addition to the original classroom in our uh, older area of the simulation center, we've now expanded to a second classroom which has the capacity of holding up to 20 learners. We also have multimedia capabilities in that classroom which gives us the entire opportunity to not just present but also to debrief following the learning opportunities. One of the key components of patient safety is high fidelity communication in healthcare. We now have a nursing station which allows us to have multidisciplinary team meetings or patient care huddles that allow us to discuss the important components of patient care. These high fidelity communications allow for transmission of the information about the patients and allow us to establish situational awareness for all team members, a crucial part of improving overall patient care. One of the newer and avant-garde areas of patient improvement of care uh, is provider reflection. We have an area here in the simulation center which allows the provider either after simulation or uh, following a, an opportunity from debriefing to go and sit and reflect quietly to identify areas where they were having issues where the where care could have been improved or areas where we were particularly satisfied and happy and would like to promote those and move those forward into future patient interactions. One of the key areas of improving patient uh, reincorporation into the home is the opportunity to allow us to practice and reinforce activities of daily living. We have a kitchen facility which is specifically to allow our occupational therapist to work on fine motor skills of our patients with regard to improving their ability to maintain their activities of daily living once they've returned to the home environment. 
These uh, facilities, again, allow us to train and promote those kinds of skills in our occupational therapists and other ancillary personnel. We're very excited to have a full operating room here in the simulation center to provide for an environmental simulation of the full operating room experience for all of our providers. It gives them the opportunity to, go, to move from scrubbing and providing sterile technique all the way through to anesthesia and operating room techniques. It gives not only physicians, but also the ancillary personnel in the operating room an opportunity to learn these individual skills as we move along. It gives us the opportunity to train individuals about rare but critical events in the operating room, such as malignant hyperthermia, hypotension, excessive blood loss, and the like. We now have a, a newer, high-fidelity obstetrical mannequin, Victoria, which allows us to simulate many more pregnancy-related complications. Not only can we allow for complex deliveries, but it also gives us the opportunity to manage hypertensive crises, as well as postpartum hemorrhage, and a number of other postpartum occurrences. This gives us the opportunity to train not just the providers, the physicians, but also the nurses and the ancillary personnel that are all involved in obstetrical care. With advancing technology and improvements uh, in the telemedicine arena, we now have an increasing demand for physicians and other advanced practice providers to have a telepresence here at the simulation center we have a telemedicine platform that allows us to practice and uh, review uh, the interactions of a physician or advanced practice provider from a telemedicine platform perspective. This gives us the opportunity to uh, perfect the skills that are necessary to have a true telemedicine presence in the community. So we're very excited. We're coming to you from our very own media room here in the simulation center. This media room allows us to produce a number of different videos that are informational from not just medical information, but any other thing that might be important for our community. This gives us the opportunity to push out this information to a large audience and have them in the give them the opportunity to go back and re-review these videos at their convenience. Here at the Simulation Center, we provide a spectrum of learning opportunities not just the environmental simulation that incorporates all aspects of patient care, but we also have specific task opportunities for training. These include things like central line training, where you can focus on specific skills that are necessary to place a central line. We also have interprofessional training, which allows us to build team uh, skills that are necessary for a team to be truly functional. In addition, we, we also have boot camp training. It gives them the opportunity to come up to speed very quickly before they begin a new opportunity, such as internship or advancing to fellowship. All those things are important to, get, to practice those in the simulation center before moving on to the clinical arena. We have the opportunity to provide uh, an important uh, training in scrub technique, which is vital to maintaining that sterility for the entire operating room procedure. A crucial first step in terms of uh, the operating room protocols. We hope this virtual tour has provided you information on the Northeastern Simulation Center. As you can see, we've got all things that are necessary for all walks of our profession. It gives us the opportunity to practice things that we do on a daily basis and reflect importantly on how we can do these things better. We would like to invite you to come to our simulation center, look at our facilities, and have the opportunity to be involved with our simulation training. Again, thank you very much. Mm -hmm.